Hi, uh, good morning. This is Keith Coper, the director of the University of Utah Seismograph Stations. And I'm also a professor of geophysics and I'm a seismologist. And uh, I've done a couple of these videos uh, before and I thought I would check in again uh, today to talk a little bit about earthquakes that have been happening, uh, you know, in the Western US, so sort of in our neighborhood. And if you feel like, gee, hasn't there been a lot of, of earthquakes going on? Uh, you're not crazy, right? The answer is yes, uh, there have been. And I was, I was just looking before I got on here and there's been eight earthquakes, uh, you know, in the Western US and sort of Northern Mexico that are magnitude five or bigger since January one. So just in this year of 2020, we've had eight earthquakes that are that are five or, or bigger. And of course we had ours, you know, March 18, we had our 5.7 here in Utah. And then there's also been a, a 6.5 that happened in Idaho. That was at the end of, of March. And then of course, uh, yesterday there was a magnitude 6.5 in uh, Western Nevada. Uh, turns out there's also been a 5.0 in Texas. And uh, there's been a couple other uh, earthquakes in, in California and, and northern Mexico. So uh, the, the average number uh, of earthquakes that we get, you know, uh, in, the, in sort of the western U.S. that are magnitude five or bigger in a given year is seven. Okay? So here we are, we're not even halfway through the year, we already have eight, and the yearly average is, is only seven. So yes, there has been, you know, sort of above average number of, of earthquakes. Um, but even though the average is seven, it's important to keep in mind that it, it varies a lot from year to year. So if we go back to 2018, uh, there were only two uh, earthquakes that, that were this big. But if we go back to 2016, during that year, there were 12, about once per month, in 2016, there was a magnitude five or bigger, uh, in the, again, in the Western, Western US. So even though the average is seven, it's not exactly seven every year. Uh, it varies from two to 12. And if I go back further than five years, it'll have even bigger uh, variations. And so the first point that I wanted to make is that even though there, there, it is above average, uh, there is an above average number of these earthquakes have been happening. It's not actually unusual. Uh, we do expect variation about the mean for what we call a stochastic process. And stochastic is just kind of a fancy word for, for random. And earthquakes are not predictable. They do tend to cluster in time and in different places in space, but, but they're, not, they're not necessarily predictable. So, uh, this is what we would expect for, uh, for a random process. And just to give you a little bit different perspective, uh, every day in the world, there's something like four and a half or four to five on average, uh, magnitude five or bigger earthquakes. Okay, so this, this is pretty common. And for instance, in 2019, we had over 1600 uh, magnitude five or bigger. And in 2018, we had over 1,800 uh, earthquakes, magnitude five or bigger in the, in the world. So this year so far, there's been about 540. And if things had been going on this average, there would have been over 630 uh, earthquakes. So uh, sorry for all the numbers, but my point is, you know, we're below average globally on the number of five magnitude five or bigger, even though here in our neighborhood, uh, we're a little bit above average. So that's the way that these processes work. And that's why uh, when we have interactions with the media and we do our, our tweets and, and Facebook and so forth, we tell people, no, there's no sort of obvious relationship between the Nevada earthquake, the Idaho earthquakes and our, and our earthquakes here in, in Magna. But, uh, it doesn't mean that we're not looking for connections. And uh, as scientists, you know, you know, just like you are, we're curious when we see something that's a little bit above average. And uh, it's not just us, it's seismologists in general look for these patterns. 
related to earthquakes and in different places. And so it's a, it's a genuine sort of endeavor that, that scientists do. But where we are right now in, in 2020 is there is no accepted uh, model uh, or another word for that would be theory to explain how earthquakes such as Idaho, Nevada, and Utah could all be related. So it doesn't mean we gave up. It doesn't mean we're not looking. Uh, we are. Uh, it's just that right now, uh, you know, the way scientists, the way we communicate is we do these papers and we do these studies. And whenever you have a model or a theory, it has to make a prediction. And if your model or your theory doesn't make a prediction, then it's not considered testable. And so that means it's not even considered scientific. Uh, and so people have come up with these models that make predictions and have explanations and, and this sort of thing for how earthquakes, magnitude five, separated by hundreds of miles, how they could be related. And none of them has sort of passed the test at this point, right? And uh, so there is, there, that's why we say there is no scientifically, you know, validated model model for this uh, and um, but I just wanted you to know that we do look into it <laughs> you know when things like this happen and uh, all the incentives for us as scientists actually are to want to predict earthquakes right so if you're a scientist uh, the way you know if you were able to explain relationships between seemingly unrelated earthquakes uh, or do better forecasting or, or actually predict earthquakes. If you were able to do that, you would be quite famous. You would win all these awards. You would have lots of graduate students that wanted to work with you. Uh, you would have lots of funding from the US government, from different companies. Uh, you would be quite, quite successful. So the incentive is actually not for us to hide anything you know, that, that would come up that we might discover. It's the opposite. and. Uh, there are, in general, scientists do like publicity, and uh, they do like, you know, to be to be in the news, so to speak. And so, you know, if we had some idea or some model or some theory about what was going on, uh, we would certainly tell people about it, uh, especially, you know, if it if it was passing the tests, right? If it was making these predictions that could be uh, confirmed. But unfortunately, we don't have that capability right now. And so uh, I guess the point of this, uh, you know, this, this message that I have today is just to tell you uh, maybe three things, just to sort of recap. And, and one is, yes, uh, there have been an unusually large number of bigger earthquakes in the Western US this year. It's, it's true, okay? But the second point is uh, that's consistent with a random process, okay? It's consistent with this idea that there's these variations uh, from year to year. Uh, and so there is no better explanation. If we had a better explanation than that, we would give it to you for sure, uh, but we don't. There is no better model uh, for, for um, explaining how these events might be related. And then the, the third thing would be uh, we would certainly tell people if we thought we had a method of, uh, of, of forecasting these sort of events. Uh, it, it, it's absolutely against all of our incentives not to, not to tell people about it. Okay, so I think I've gone on for enough for today and I'll end it there uh, and everybody stay safe and stay healthy.